stage, but Ayla, for instance, stepping in and performing yeah. well. I know you have all been practicing together too. Yeah, um, even when team played with uh, Ayla, I played with a team like a little bit, like we split the split. It make me uh, turn into the team like easily. And then the one sad thing is like, I feel like I feel like there is no better support than Ayla in HS. So I think, I don't know, like I'm sad that I can play in here right now, but I'm sad that I can't play against potentially the second best support player in HS. Back to the LCS. Where now I'm sad because oh Core JJ's goodness. sad, and yeah. I never want to see Core JJ <laughs> be sad. Uh, but as he says, I'm also sad because now I feel robbed of that support matchup between himself and Ayla. Quite an accolade uh, to be handed by uh, by the uh, starter on the <laughs> roster as Ayla steps back in for Core JJ this week. Yeah, I think regardless of what you think about his statement that Ayla is the second best support and might not be there, the fact that. You know, Azale brought this up in waiting room. The fact that he can make it, the fact that it doesn't sound super outrageous, and the fact that Ayla not only filled in for Core JJ, but it was never part of the discussion. It was just TL is a good team, he is a good player. No one was ever talking about in spite of or the fact that Core isn't here. That's a massive props to his play. I'll go a step further and say, like, he was the shining point in some of their games. These Thresh highlights are disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like, this is someone who's stepping up and helping the team actively win, as opposed to, like, oh, I'm just not ankle weights at least. Like, mm -hmm. he's, yeah. he's been so good when he gets his signature picks. Yes, it's not core JJ level. We're all waiting. You know, we're sad that core JJ is not playing. But, like, he's an incredible player, and he's going to be swimming in offers in the offseason. 100%. Uh, I think in terms of supports that are performing better, I would put down Huhi and Aframu. But still, the fact that Ayla's name is, you can firmly place him in the top five, says a lot to him. And also, just if you talk to the members, like I remember the interview of Whippo was saying that he actually preferred playing with Ayla just because, you know, the games are a lot more controlled. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon J wants to fight. <laughs> so uh, I, I think yeah. that. He likes to play yeah. with Ayla because then he gets to do whatever he wants Boom. to do, right? Okay. Yeah. Ayla's not in his lane at, like, after like five yep. minutes. Yeah, I have a feeling Core JJ is uh, making a few more uh, definitive <laughs> calls uh, throughout the map that people have to adhere to. But as we talk about Ayla uh, stepping in and being a top performer for Team Liquid, I think we look to the other side of the match, been Golden Guardians. And as we talk top performers there, uh, Pride Stalker in the jungle uh, is a name that's going to be at the forefront of everybody's mind. But again, his matchup today is not easy going up against one of the best of all time in the LCS in Santorin. I think the thing that jumps out to me the most, which is highlighted on the screen there, is the jungle, jungle proximity difference, uh, which is explaining how Pride Soccer is always having less pressure in his lanes. And I say pressure in air quotes because he's on assassins, he's on things that need to get fed and farmed up. And he only wants to show up to lanes to get kills for himself, whereas Santorin is more than happy to be a babysitter for his laners if they need it. Yeah, these are two junglers that are incredibly different, right? When I think of Santorin, I think of how intelligent he is and drawing uh, on his experience to make plays around the map and responding to what his opponents are doing. He's someone who thinks through a lot of different scenarios. Where you're, if Pride Stalker is playing, you're playing around Pride Stalker as a carry. Yeah, I, I mean, right now Santorin's been getting a lot of players of the game just because of performances like these. Coming in bot lane really early on, helping out the lane matchup, and so from that point forward, Team Liquid's bot lane can just snowball. This game, uh, their bot lane was incredibly fed and was because of Santorin's initial pressure. And then earlier on in the split, like his Xin Xiao performance was just off the charts, gets him another player of the game. He's just performing incredibly well. Meanwhile, I would say Pride Stalker's been doing pretty much the same thing. I've been watching and loving how Pride Stalker has played the, ga the game. And in fact, a lot of his performances is what's given Golden Guardians their lead. They right now are atop the, atop of the table in terms of uh, major uh, uh, advantages have time spent with a major lead right in the league and that's just like the first 15 minutes beautiful for golden guardians the rest of the game needs a lot of work uh, but it's just great to see the, the 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 stark differences between both these junglers. It's also interesting that both of the plays we pulled, like Santorin is rushing down on the trundle to make that gank when we're talking about maybe how he's like slower and steadier. And then the Pride Stalker play was actually him responding and they called up their bot lane to respond to where they knew River was going to repeat gank, which is a really intelligent look at the map itself. So it was interesting to see like snapshots of each jungler in each other in those plays. Yeah, I think 
think if I was Price Arc, I'd be a little mad that I've got robbed of a bunch of player of the games that yeah. I would have gotten if my team actually closed them <laughs> if out. If we correct. won the game, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's always snowballing his early leads. Them and Team Liquid are two of the teams that are, you know, in the top part of CS or goal difference at 15. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then there's a massive gap after like the top three or four in the league. Uh, and so they're both really incredible early game junglers. Yeah, it's just fun because even watching Mark's, uh, uh, you know, State Farm analyst, like, or at least that uh, neighborhood <laughs> tactics, where a lot of those plays when they run up against Cloud9 was because of his ganks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, the ganks that he had top lane versus Summit. Then the, the gank that he went bot lane to, on a flashless uh, Berserker, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times he is efficient in how he ganks. He will clear out his jungle first. And then if he's needed for a long time, he probably won't be there. <laughs> but if he's there for a short gank or counter gank, he will be there and it's effective. I'm, I'm curious how these two styles, though, actually interact when they meet each other on the Rift, right? Is it going to be the kind of situation where if Santorin's looking for those inventive, you know, creative and, and intellectual level two, you know, surprise ganks, uh, you know, is Pride Stalker going to be there to try and counter those kinds of things? Or, as you mentioned, Mark, you know, in a number of ways, usually looking to clear out his entire jungle and play for himself first? Will he? Will, will the team strategy mostly be about, hey, do our best to staunch the bleeding caused by Santorin while Pride Stalker is afforded that time to be efficient as a jungler and yes. build his gold? Yes, and I mean, Santorin, especially in the playoffs, as you can see in Nero, the coach. Get out! Yeah. Yeah. He looks like the a mafia boss. Box. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the drip, the black turtle net. Yeah, Incredible. Yeah. He's going to collect the taxes before he gets out of the seat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, Santorin has been a neutralizer, something that during playoffs <laughs> has been able to just, just <laughs> stop uh, the enemy jungler from doing what he was wanting to do. So, like, that's one thing. Another thing to look out for as we watch this series is the fact that it's it's a Blaze Olive versus his mentor uh, when they were both mm -hmm. on TSM. TSM uh, primary mid laner, of course, being Bjergsen for so long, and the Blaze Olive. Is that who their mid laner was? TSM. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just a you know little known you guy. You might not know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Olive chose to play on TSM at the time, wanting to play underneath and learn from Bjergsen. So the fact that we're able to see this matchup first time is going to be exciting to watch. What I'm excited too is how those are going to influence that jungle matchup while you're yeah. talking mm -hmm. because. TL is just so stacked that you can kind of do what you want in terms of how you want to attack him. You could go for more aggressive lanes that get pushed, and then while you have, you know, Pride Soccer trying to farm up, Santorin goes for aggressive invades and skirmishes, True. and you try and snowball actually through uh, shutting down the main point. Or we talked about if you want to weather the storm that is going to come from Golden Guardians early game, they have that flexibility partially because of Bjergsen's champion pool, and you can kind of go the zillion where you're, you're trying to scale for late, or you can take something a lot more aggressive. And the blueprint for that, I would say, is the game that Golden Guardians had versus TSM. Well, yeah, Golden Guardians won that game. The first, the level one, was yeah. horrendous for Pride Stalker. He was essentially yeah. pushed out yeah. of the game until TSM made a crucial mistake later on. But just being able to have, if you have confidence in uh, the draft that you have, being early game focused, then you can definitely push Pride Stalker out of the game if he has one of his uh, marquee picks like Zed or something like that. Is that what you want to see, an early game focused draft? Yes. For, for Golden for, Guardians specifically? Uh, for, yeah, for Golden Guardians. I think it's also pretty helpful for Team Liquid. Team Liquid has a lot of confidence in their mechanics and individual mm -hmm. laners. And I do think that when they get a lead, they will solidify that. They, they win those games. Uh, so I think it makes a lot of sense for them to just kind of match Golden Guardians' early game focus. I mean, make, yeah, it makes perfect sense. I, I think I look at this Team Liquid roster, though, at 5-1, and one, right? And even with, again, the su substitution in the bot lane, a lot of people look at this team and are baffled about how you would ultimately attack them. How do you build a lead against this team? And it's going to be Golden Guardian's job to figure that out today on our first Friday of Super Week. Here, though, is how Kobe and Flowers got ready for the last match. So, gents, right after, so what are you able to kite out the flay slow that you... <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is oh, my God. My goodness. Wow. Is this, All right. Are they well, doing this currently? I don't know if that was supposed to be impressive jumping jacks or just fast jumping jacks or, or really what that was, but maybe they can explain it to us as we toss it out there. Oh, that must have been right after too. the game. Yeah. I the last know. game, because you yeah. can still see guys, the Guys, explain. One. So, mm hmm. Guys, no. You guys were rolling. That was not after the game. No. That was before all of the games. That was during the rehearsal part of the game. Yeah. You're, they didn't I didn't tell know us. the camera was on. Well, the camera's always on, but they're not supposed to use stuff when we're doing tech checks. That was during tech check. Oh, <laughs> well, we're getting, well, we're trying and to here I thought we were being responsible because apparently we misunderstood what Dash said. So we uh, came back looking a little anyway. fancier for this one. 
Wanted to make sure that we're ready to bring the uh, professionalism yeah, that the LCS is We're more classy now. For. Yes, yeah, exactly. Suited we have up to mm -hmm. with the tie and suited up with Team Liquid versus Golden Guardians. Let's here. do it. Let's get right into it. Picks and bans, Gwen Zeri. People thought Holy maybe. Holy Gwen Zeri! Well, people thought maybe, uh, you know, we're on 12 4. This is where the Zeri nerfs hit. No, no. still permaban. Um, still too much mobility, too much. Uh, end game potential because all you have to do is change a little bit to the crit build and uh, it's, that, that. it's extremely powerful still. Uh, I do think that the bruiser build got hit pretty decently so I feel like that's in a better spot but I still think she's too strong with, with the crit build. Moving forward though, double poke bans here with the Jace and the Corky for Golden Guardian so now I'm already thinking what does a Blaze Olive want to to early pick for mid if they're if they're investing banning away um, on Corky. He has been one to dig really deep into into his champion pool. And Bjergsen has had a tendency to just every time Corky is up in recent games, yes, he's just playing into the meta, but they have played so much Corky here for the side of Team Liquid. And now we get to see him diverge a little bit to, you know, the zillion then obviously will pop up into your head as well. Yeah, all right. So Jinx locked in. Nobody's surprised about that one. Caitlyn evaded bans this time around. So mm -hmm. in lieu of something like the Aphelios, which we see so often into Jinx, it's going to be Caitlyn this time around. We'll see if TL want to go ahead and pick up a support to go with that one. Remember, Thresh that is so commonly picked in the Jinx and Aphelios matchups is still up and available. Caitlyn doesn't need that protection as much as those two completely immobile champions do. But she also pairs really well with Lux for an incredibly powerful and oppressive lane. Yeah, it's always uh, Lux Caitlyn here immediately when you think for the hard pushing into trap, uh, binding into trap combination for Team Liquid. And since they've got Ayla back in, this is a very straightforward bottom lane to play. I do uh, have some misgivings about the, the scaling now for Caitlyn. Ooh, misgiving. Yeah, the, the attack damage per level was also taken down. Uh, to this champion so the team fights towards the the mid and late stages are definitely going to be focused on golden gardens getting the reset for jinx big surprise there but no the early stage of of caitlin is has been untouched you know and caitlin lux the whole point of this early draft from team liquid is to have hard push on bottom side get some plate money uh you know get your cs lead poke them down under turret and be able to play off of a very strong bottom side, despite Core JJ not being there. Uh, and they've already obviously had success with Ayla plus Han's combination. Yeah, Ayla has just proven to be an incredibly powerful resource for Team Liquid, an incredibly potent weapon for them to utilize. It's not normal for you to be able to take a guy who many people always consider to be one of, if not the top player in the league, sub him out and have the sub impress everyone as much as Ayla has. If you're gonna be playing the bottom side, Flowers, now you also have have a twisted fate to further accentuate the strengths of Caitlyn Lux. They are going to push on bottom side with impunity because if you gank them, they will kill you. They've got a twisted fate ultimate ready to come to bottom side to cover them. And you know what? A lot of times we have conversations about how, you know, the League of Legends season, it spans a lot of the year. You know, we've got spring into MSI, into summer, into Worlds, and players really only have a little bit of time off towards the end of the year. But the nice part about this is when you're up against Caitlyn Lux TF, you can have all the time off in the world because as soon as one of those CCs hits you, you're not playing, you're not doing anything, you're not moving, gold card, binding, trap, all of it just makes sure that you're seeing nothing but a black and white screen, my friend. Exactly. Team Liquid definitely clear focus thus far, and top lane has yet to be touched. So we'll see if they want to split bands between top side and jungle. Thus far already banning out the Jarvan here. Pride Stalker, though, has been obviously highlighted for Kiana and Zed play. These yep. assassins, he plays them extremely well. And so I don't know about you know, dropping jungle bans here for Team Liquid if they will actually hit the mark versus Pride Stalker himself, since... Well, he, there's one targeted at him, specifically. Does, there we go. So at least they got one of them. The Zed is still available, and he has definitely shown a preference towards um, that assassination play style. It just means you need a little bit more structure for the Jinx in, in a different part of your composition. Uh, the Kiana, they're more scared of the Kiana because of the team-wide stun ultimate. Uh, worth pointing out here, Golden Guardians did miss that ban on accident. This is not a display error in the draft. They simply only banned four champions this time around because of delay. That's 
just something that happens sometimes. So Jarvan and Kiana banned out by Team Liquid. Only Gangplank banned out by the Golden Guardians. Hecarim will be locked in for TL. So with these three powerful abilities to chain CC together, the range of the Caitlyn with TF and Lux's range as well, hmm. this will be the first one that's really that charge forward initiator frontline type of pick. I mean, I guess, yeah, it happens sometimes, but like that just seems so simple, such a, a small thing to be able to correct there, not getting I'm the comms out for the- be nice. <laughs> not, not, trying to, <laughs> not trying to be able to, uh, you know, set up a- I mean, an arrow looks great. He does look like yeah. a boss. You know, Mark was right, dead on. Like, he is intimidating. Uh, so, uh, uh, regardless, without that ban, it's not going to hurt him too much We better see an arrow in Grand Theft Auto 6. They That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. They still have two really good blinds here. You know, I, as we were talking about, dropping some bans here into the jungle pool, it doesn't really hurt Pride Soccer at all. He's still able to pick up the Zen. Um, pretty much universal jungle champion. And this is a very, 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 very standard champ select for Golden Guardians. Um, you know, rounding it out with the blind pick Nar there for uh, for the team fighting for this team that is, you know, constructed around Jinx. So there's no no real big surprises from the Golden Guardian side. It's more about can Team Liquid make, you know, take full advantage of this Twisted Fate pressure trying to outroam Rise? Because the Blaze Olive, if he can get the early push uh, and roam on Rise first, that would throw a big wrench into the Team Liquid plans here. And if they keep past 20 seconds, that means you can't trade anymore. So it is for sure going to be the Bwipo Viego top side. Yeah. Uh, they're not doing any kind of weird, you know, laning Hecarim or anything here. So uh, we get to see Bwipo back on Viego in the top lane. And I feel like this is a champion that, remember, Viego's numbers got hit really hard in terms of his abilities to sustain in, in lane over time. Like, really, really, really hard. From 150% down to 10%, I believe it was. Like, this champion was forced mostly completely out of lanes, but I love the fact that Whippo's the type of player who's not <laughs> afraid to throw it back. He's definitely not afraid of anything. Now, some top laner, I mean, I have to say, though, top laners can get a lot of even if you already have confidence, you will get even more confidence from having a Twisted Fate as your mid laner. Yeah. So it's always nice to have both side lanes be opportunities for the Twisted Fate to go to, to make plays off of. And a Viego plus Twisted Fate teleporting in on a mini Nar would also spell death. So there are options to both sides of the map for Bjergsen to play to, either to Whippo or to Hans. The same still is true for Golden Guardians, though. It's just a, a little bit more difficult for the Rise to make up the small timing difference between Realm Warp doesn't quite get you the full distance that the Twist of Fate Ultimate does. Right. And they're going to have to focus on trying to get control of the minion wave first. So we'll see if the junglers interact with mid lane first to unlock your mid laner and get your mid laner the pass to roam first. Well. Let's see if Pride Stalker gets caught out here. Immediately flashes away, seeing Bjergsen armed with the gold card already locked in. Means if that one found him, he would have been dead. So instantly getting the summoner spell nicely done for TL. And what I want to ask you here, Kobe, is pretty much everybody watching this is expecting Team Liquid to be the winner here, like just based on how good this team is. So early on, what do you want to see from the Golden Guardians? Because that's where they've showed us they can play. That's their strength. That's their forte in League of Legends. What does this early game need to look like specifically? So pre-blowing your flash on the Xin Zhao, right. I, I would love to see something like a, a early gank towards bottom side. Because if you can catch a Caitlyn Lux lane, off of a timing where they are not expecting an early gank. And Zen, even though it's not the best, can level two gank. You know, it's not a very common level two ganker. And you're gonna have to give up the opportunities to, oh yeah, maybe Hecarim will be able to counter jungle me. But if you can upset a Caitlyn Lux lane early on with some timings and disrupt their hard pushing and disrupt the momentum of this bottom side, that can be one way where, you know, Golden Guardians can upset the, those predictions you're talking about and try and upset a team perceived to be much better than them by literally everyone, you know, Team Liquid at the very top of the standings. Right. Um, and having a lot of control. But since Zin got his flash blown, that becomes very punishable. Not only do you leave your camps on the top side exposed, 
but you yourself would be exposed to a turnaround gank. Olay bows a Whoa. flash himself, though. But now the counter attack, the counter flash, the damage in the CC chain. It'll be a one for one. Lost gets excited with the kill on the enemy support, but Han Sama's the one with the HP advantage, so Lost can go no further. Bottom lane is bloody two and a half minutes into the game. Yeah, that alarm is going off. Jungler's gank bottom now. The supports are so vulnerable. Han Sama's also double summoner spells blown in that as well, so. You know, as we were talking it up, and we are talking up ganking bottom lane early, you can still gank bottom lane a little later. Now they have no summoner, so both junglers will be looking for vision control around bottom side to try and find ways to gank. Olay here with the flash onto Hans. He forces out the flash here as well with his death sentence. Hans flashes up the lane. Ayla punishes instantly, though. That's what you like to see for, you know, the sub for Core JJ coming back in. They have not lost the killer instinct. So yep. he goes for the punish. It does end up with a one for one trade, you know, and him giving his life back as well. So it's not like a trade up, but it does mean um, now there are no summer spells on the Thresh for bottom side in addition to the, you know, both team Liquid members and either of them could be taken advantage of. My favorite thing in that whole play is the fact that Olay flashed in for the Flay knowing that Flay plus the Thresh empowered auto attack on the minion kills that minion, which is the one that gives him level two. Notice how he jumps in, Flays, turns around, and then immediately hit the minion. That's the kind of support play and recognition of his surroundings that I love to see. Now he's gonna find a death sentence, flayed right back into some flame chompers. Lost gotta be a little bit careful here. The damage goes out, Lost gets excited, and Ole sets it up again. Ole, 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 Ole. He's back at it, Flowers, oh my goodness. We don't need junglers to punish, actually. Nope. Flash. We just need Ole. <laughs> Turns out, uh, Ole just gets right back in it. This one really, uh, really nice from him as well. I mean, the the level two power spikes has been <laughs> talked to death. Um, uh, you know, with everybody trying to look for that last bit of experience. But again, you can always catch people off guard with. It. You can still yeah. to this day catch people off guard with it. And I like your kudos to him there. You know, going for. Uh, the surprise burst damage on the minion to level it up and, and get there. And then having the confidence to go right back at Hansama and Ayla and force the, the consecutive play here means that even without jungle pressure, they put a stop to the Caitlyn Lux early game plan of hard pushing and getting a CS alert lead early. So big props to the Golden Guardians bottom lane. As a duo, this duo has actually been a very significant part of this team's early game leads. I'm, I'm loving it, man. I mean, Caitlyn Lux wins by hitting you with the power of their range. Any sort of random spells that happen to hit you, the lane's going to become more and more difficult. So Ole's just saying, all right, well, it becomes more difficult the longer we're here. Let's not be here for a long time. Let's make this a quick affair. And that's what's happening. I love to see these types of lanes, which are normally bullied, threatened by the potential of the all-in, and skill-checked by Ole's accuracy with these skill shots, with these flays and death sentences. Yeah. Pride Stalker's down here now. You can also see Santorin is in the bottom half of the map. He's currently going for a recall. I think Pride Stalker doesn't really expect there to be a whole lot here. He's just making sure that they can get this wave shoved up without any interference coming out from Santorin. That will be the case. Ole can pick up the cannon minion. Pride Stalker goes over to the Drake, and with the bottom wave shoved up and the enemy jungler all the way back in base, this should be a Drake for the Golden Guardians. Bottom bottom lane pushing, bottom lane two kills for you is gonna do that. So it feels very good for San, uh, for uh, Pride Stalker here, considering his flash was blown early, and so he just went into default farming for Xin Zhao. Yep. Um, which is, you know, not the kind of ideal scenario, <laughs> obviously, but Lost and Ole making plays on the bottom side, open them up with Dragon Control, and he's, he's cruising here uh, as far as the build. You love being able to get the pickaxe from your from your early purchase mm -hmm. um, because it is so much nicer uh, to go along that side of the, of the build tree and be able to get your whip, uh, which helps out Zin's clear so much. Mid lane, just a little bit of trading here. Uh, not going to turn into anything, though. And speaking of clear speed, Santorin going for the Ionian Boots of Lucidity first, buffing up his own clear speed in a bit of a different way, not focusing on how fast you clear the camps, but on how fast you move in between them. Still makes a difference, still very effective, especially for Hecarim, who does get damage from move speed anyway, but Santorin being extra fast means those ganks are extra scared. Yes, my the general rule is if you're playing a jungler that goes for a Cinder Hulk style 
first item for your mythic, then you definitely want to upgrade your tier two boots first. And generally, you want them to be these lucidity boots. Because like you're talking about, you know, the cooldown reduction and the move speed both help out your clear. But if you are attack damage jungler, then you want attack damage. So that you, both your ganks are more powerful, uh, more threatening to be able to get your kills. And uh, it's actually a much greater increase for you. So there's the whip we were talking about for Zin. Yep. Uh, and he also is able to pick up the Ruby Crystal off of first back. So Pride Psyker will get level six off this. Yes, and even takes the blue for himself. So level six is for both junglers. Now they are very ready, uh, you know, to play off one of these lanes. Licorice is playing quite nice on the on the Narva, staying safe while mini form. He knows that in this matchup, especially versus double AD top with Hecarim plus Viego, he's got to rush his steel caps. That means you are very vulnerable to CC because you don't have Merc Treads for a Twisted Fate teleporting on top of your head. So uh, he's doing a good job uh, CSing while staying safe, not really exposing himself to that play. And uh, it is up to the early push here towards mid lane. If you get control of those mid lane minions, that's going to set you up here for the neutrals. And uh, off the support recall, it's going to be a force on Herald for Golden Guardian. So Bwipo knows that he has got to play safe. He is now on the weak side because his team is committing to bottom push. If you look at the minimap, it's always very clear here. And the Lux plus Caitlyn are going to try and hard push, get to this turret plate. But you only had to have a half commitment from Jinx Thresh. So Lost and Ole are back here to receive the wave. And just by hovering up into the Fog of War, they were able to bluff enough to allow the full pickup there of the Rift Herald. There was a chunk on the Bwipo. And, and it's a nice leveraging of the early advantage here by Golden Guardians to once again set themselves up for success. So first early dragon, first Rift Herald. This is a story that has been true for so many yeah. Golden Guardians games. Golden Guardians just have to be able to complete the rest of the game after the early phases. They've got this early stuff down. Whippo again running away as Licorice lands a little bit of damage there with a boomerang. But I really want to see what they're able to get with this Herald too. Are we just going to see two plates and then dip? Or are we going to get a more cohesive play with the entire team grouping up, trying to find success on a full turret push? Because the mid laners are both roaming mid laners, I expect there to be a more explosive uh, you know, attempt at a pick on a side lane okay. into a Rift Herald play. In these situations, and, you know, obviously we've been talking a lot about trying to push in the mid wave first uh, so that you can try and make your play on, on the other side of the map, but it's going to be a jungle plus mid lane play to either top or bottom side, whichever one they feel like they can get better positioning on. And then if you successfully pull that play off and you get the kill, then you can get the whole turret, you know, and really snowball and get a lot more out of that Rift Field. So Golden Guardian is going to be looking for that one. Unfortunately for them, everybody on Team Liquid has their cooldowns back. Everybody has flashes. So they are not the easiest of targets to pull that play off against. Worth mentioning here, first mythic of the game completed by Lost, the Gale Force. Those two kills in the bottom lane, both going over to the Jinx, being very helpful for getting this online more quickly. And especially since Gale Force isn't just one of those items that's a ball of stats, it has a very powerful active. This could be a big difference maker whenever we do get one of those big fights. Oh yeah, we're, we're hoping for it. The big play, um, I... I know a lot of Jinxes will default to Kraken Slayer because she gets so much DPS, you know, obviously focusing so much on the auto attacks and resetting for later. But Ball of stats. Man, the plays. The plays are just so fun with Gale Force. So uh, especially for the Jinxes, I always applaud when they, they opt for um, this strategy just because it's funner to watch, you know? This, yeah. is, this is a much better viewer item. I agree. It's like, I'm not inherently wanting to say that like ball of stats items are bad. Most items are that, but Gale Force just adds that extra pizzazz. Yeah. Plus it's also uh, always uh, beneficial to take versus Twisted Fate yeah. because you're going to be under pressure of teleport ganks. And so more, another dash, more mobility to get out of either Lux Bindings or a Twisted Fate is teleporting on top of your head is going to give you that dual purpose. You can either make the exciting play that we're looking for or save it for defensive purposes to make sure Twisted Fate plus Lux does not kill you. Making the exciting plays your team is looking for when their hyper carry <laughs> yeah. isn't like, dead. He lived! Exciting! Yeah, exactly! Anyway, what else is exciting is the fact that Golden Guardians have now got their second Drake of the game. Both of those go into them before the 12 minute mark. Now we only have about one minute left in the Rift Herald. Pride Stalker is going to have to figure out where he wants to drop this. It doesn't look like the Golden Guardians are all grouped up to make that big push like you were talking about. 
so I'm expecting them to just go for the two plates and then be gone sort of play, but they do need to use this here very soon. Yep, two minutes on the clock, ticking away here, not too much pressure. Again, a Blaze Olive gets the early push in mid. You see him kind of hover up the river right now on minimap, uh, trying to find an opening, but neither top laner has exposed himself or I believe even blown flash in this game. And, and it continues to be the grind here as bottom side, I think for Golden Guardians was the biggest story of the game. Them getting those back-to-back -back Ole plays changed how this early game is supposed to look, you know, from this side for them. And uh, now this is the play we were hoping for, Flowers. It's a bottom side riv uh, jungle plus mid lane coming down. They All don't right. get a pick first, but they can still brute force it. Well, here goes Shelly. Get in there, Shelly. Hit him with your head. All right, that's about <laughs> all we get. Two plates. Yep, cash in. Uh, pretty good regardless, being able to get the gold in the right place. And they bring Rise down for good measure just because they know Bjergsen could easily pop to a bait ultimate. Yep. What you give up for that, as you can see now on screen, is mid lane control for once. Uh, and Bjergsen, he he's actually recalling now. They aren't going for the pickoff play on, on top side. This is the play that they gain by that trade for a Blaze going bottom and having to pick up the wave second. Now that they've kind of reset it, the wave crashing into top side, it's just a fight over the jungle camp. Santorin gets oh, that one. Oh, Santorin steals away the Gromp, but now they're looking for the fight itself. Pride Stalker's in the middle of everybody trying to stay alive with the ulti, but Team Liquid's able to pile in. Whippo's being focused, but Licorice is being focused harder. Team Liquid has already found themselves a couple of kills. Can they get one more? A Blaze Olive stuck underneath the turret. Whippo's taking the aggro, and he's in, he's out. It's all done. Team Liquid 3 nothing. They don't need to surprise teleport play. If you're just going to stand there 3v3 and force the engage, Team Liquid really needed that, Flowers, and that is a huge, huge outplay for them on top side of the map to get this gold back. That's two kills onto Whippo. This Viego is another possible win condition for Team Liquid since the bottom side early preference for Caitlyn Lux, you know, pushing on lane, getting turret plates, getting gold lead for themselves was routed by the Golden Guardians. They need a backup plan here. And, and this one is going to serve for it. So Pride Stalker goes in, but Santorin is a really good ult into E backwards to bring him into Whippo's range. And that range separating him from the rest of Golden Guardians allows Whippo to get the kill, get the reset, and take over the 3v3 fight. I think as much props to Whippo for being the carry top laner, you know, and massive Viego possibility for carrying the game for them now, Santorin really good heads up play to ult and then E back the Zin into a position where they can get him isolated from the rest of the 3v3 scenario uh, and allow Team Liquid this opportunity. They do end up paying for it in the reset though, Flowers. Yeah, one thing that that Rocket Flip the Switch replay really showed off to me is the fact that Team Liquid is just one of those squads you've always got to respect in these medium-sized skirmishes. 2v2s, 3v3s. Santorin coming down here to force a bit of a 2v1. Licorice with the flash away. Blippo with the Ooh. flash follow and the Spectral Maw. He's got to get away from the turret aggro now. Santorin's going to be stunned up, but Onslaught of Shadows will take Licorice down. Yeah, a little messy, but they do get it. Because it took so Whoa. much time, it allows Golden Guardians to push in here towards mid lane with their Riv Terrell and Santorin gonna get chased out as well. It was Super Mega Death Rocket from Lost that sniped Whippo and made Santorin stand alone against the Golden oh. Guardians mid laner. So Golden Guardians actually get to mop both of them up nicely done. Yeah, I mean, the swing from Team Liquid on bottom side gets them one kill, but Golden Guardians response is double the value. They get mid lane push with the Rift Tail in addition to the snipe. You're talking about from Jinx getting one kill. Ablaze Realm Warp gets the other flowers. Golden Guardians swing right back up into pole position here in this game. Two dragons plus the 1.6k gold lead. I actually, I'm going to be honest with you for one second. I have no idea what pole position it was, I know it's from racing. Yeah, that's, it's a that's shout out to F1. So I don't actually, I haven't watched a lot of F1. We don't have that I, in NA. We have NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, uh, but... I watched a really good, uh, the Netflix documentary does a really oh. good job of storytelling. And, and I've, uh, you know, I really like the, the drivers in it. A lot of good, uh, good stories there. So Boom. anyway, that's that little aside. Uh, Golden Guardians, big cross map plays. That was insane. The accuracy there to get the snipe into the realm warp timing to pick up not one, but both of the kills. 
that were sacrificed in the dive attempt on Licorice. And Licorice made them expend everything there. Now, really good job by Licorice buying the time and forcing them to go super deep on their tower dive. So, well done here by the Golden Guardians. That is three dragons to their names. They are at Soul Point, and they are a Jinx comp here with the Jinx having a massive early lead, Flowers. This, this is giant for the Golden Guardians to start off super weak with a magnificent lead over the rank one team. Now, this is what I'm looking at, though, because this is where, time and time again, the Golden Guardians start to slip. This is where they lose control of the game. <laughs> no. no, I'm not trying to curse it. I am being honest, damn it. So the question that I want to pose to you, knowing their history, knowing how these games have gone before, what do the next five minutes, what do the next ten minutes need to look Kill like? Whippo! Whippo's going to maybe get slammed <laughs> to the wall, but now he gets away. Rampage uh -oh. coming out for loss, but it'll be one for one. Pride Stalker wants to get out. Box going to get dropped. Whippo's nearly killed. Down to 100 HP. Golden Guardians, they get the tier two. They back away from this one. Bjergsen's still chasing. Flame Chomper's arm up. TL won't find anything else. So I will say this. So a lot of times when you're looking at these comeback stats for Golden Guardians, for teams that are playing against them specifically, okay. um, those teams are playing champions that have much better scaling, and so there is this extra pressure on the Golden Guardians. But as we said, this time around, Golden Guardians have a very standard Jinx composition, which is very good at moving these five-on-fives forward in the game. And so the fact that they have Soul Point, plus they have the Fed Jinx early here for loss off of some really good plays from Ole thus far and him getting that extra kill now up to four, bodes so well. I am not as worried as I have been in the past for comebacks against the Golden Guardians because this setup actually does very well with a Dragon lead. Uh, even though the Gold lead is not massive, they, they've got the ability to force Team Liquid to come to them. And this is not the early lead for Caitlyn that you're kind of expecting. This is not a yeah. fed Hansama. So he's, he's even in farm. He's two and one versus four and zero on the other side. Yeah, yeah this is great. And you generally need and want your, your Caitlyn to be ahead to be on the normal power curve for this champion because, uh, you know, as you go further on into the game, Jinx, especially with the passive, does get to outperform the Caitlyn. Now, Caitlyn will have the ability to combine traps with CC, which is definitely set up on this team, either the Lux or the uh, Twisted Fate, even Whippo with the Spectral Maw yep. can be a possibility. And so the good Caitlyn players can, can still have really big effects later on by having good trap combinations for to get the most out of their headshots and try and use their extra range. But it is a lot more difficult. Licorice, though, Mininar being attacked. He's getting collapsed on, but the rest of the Golden Guardians are here to try to respond. Pride Stalker eating a lot of damage. He might just get bursted down, but the damage flies back over the wall. And they've got one for one so far. Whippo's gonna die before he can reset again. But Lost has fallen, and that's all that matters. The Golden Guardians drop the ball, and it's Team Liquid picking up the fumble. Oh. Bjergsen flashes back away as a Blaze Olive is here in a 1v3. He'll do his best to try to win it. Hansel oh. wants to get away, but a beautiful bounce for the kill. The fumble don't matter. A Blaze Olive just smears him into the ground. A Blaze Olive with the 1v3. A true 1v3 in the aftermath here. Flux Q bouncing back to hit both carries. So good. Huge stuff from him. One of the North American rookies with the most promise from previous years. Definitely, Golden Guardians put a lot of faith in him, trying to build up on him. Here's a look, though, in the replay, how Team Liquid are trying to force these resets for Whipple, and he almost gets another one here. You see, after that kill, he's very close to the soul, couldn't quite click it, but in the chase here, you think, oh my god, it's it's 1v3, and Bjergsen has stopwatch, he saves himself, so Team Liquid are probably going to get this, too, but the Flux bounce there. He gets the flash out of Bjergsen early, then he does miss that Q after flashing, but it doesn't matter. Flux into the so Q, good. then on Bjergsen. So actually, it was the flash out of the way. Hans flashed out of the way of that Q and it ends up going through him into Bjergsen to still chain to him. He got both flashes out of those carries. And in the end, the second flash from the carry still bounces the Flux over to kill him.
Welcome to the Ablaze Olive Garden. When you're here, he takes out the whole family. <laughs> Let's go, man. That's the kind of play I like to see. That's the kind of play that can change a game. That's the kind of play that keeps Golden Guardians in the lead here as the Drake is about to spawn for the soul. They have control. They have priority. They have a Blaze Olive now getting pulled to safety as Centaurin jumps in and the targeting is over onto the rise. A Blaze Olive gets himself out. Whippo goes in. He tries to get the reset, but again, the kill is on Lost. Golden Guardians are 3v4. A Blaze Olive at one third HP. Whippo's been killed away. The Drake is still going to be their target here. Pride Stalker's alive, but he has no smite just yet. Golden Guardians ready to fight for this soul, but can they even do it? They will be forced away, Team Liquid. Oh, but Pride Stalker, he's got the flash. Does he want to try to go in and YOLO this? Uh, he's, he's thinking about it, man. Doesn't look like we're going to get it. Oh, maybe? Heart, nope. Yeah, if you leash the dragon like that, can't get he can't get the W in. So maybe if you W that, and you actually hit it, you can go for the charge and try and get out and flash over the wall afterwards. But Team Liquid are able to at least pick up that dragon to avoid the soul. But Golden Guardians still have the Baron Buck here, so so much potential to push. Yeah, and the guy, that, that, that guy on your screen there, you know, Blaze Olive was the focus, but again, it, it's the, the tank rise build there with the Thimble Winter um, being, providing so much shielding for him throughout the, the duration of this fight and buying a lot, uh, creating a lot of space for the rest of the team. I mean, I, I love it when you start to, to see him shine once again because there was so much hype around him um, previously during his rookie year coming in as a north american mid laner those are so rare yeah um and so people are really excited hoping that he could continue hype uh during the rest of his his years for for lcs and he he definitely is looking to bring it here with the 401 split push in this game for golden guardians versus team liquid 2000 gold lead they still have the possibility four minutes down the line to pick up that Mountain Soul. And they're gonna try and make use of this Baron to continue with their 4-1 split push, get as much gold as they possibly can out of it. Golden Guardians with about 3,000 gold ahead of their opponents. Team Liquid are back defending their inhibitor line. It doesn't look like they're going to have the risk of losing any of those inhib turrets here. The Baron only has five seconds remaining on it. Golden Guardians easily able to back out from this one. Team Liquid can't force a fight or anything, but Team Liquid will maintain the integrity of the base and that's what's important you get through that first Baron you still have that entire inhibitor line in there that's pretty solid Whippo's back to farming here in bottom lane Black Cleaver completed over there for Pride Stalker now this item has really rose up into the meta of itemization for bruisers a lot of the time when you want to go for the offensive option just the ability to stack the armor penetration that your team benefits from as well as the movement speed can really help you stick to those targets yeah being able to shred frontline uh, armor you know resistances is very valuable for Zin because a lot of the times for Zin, um, you know, you'll pop your ultimate. So their front line, assuming they're out of range there, given it being a, you know, like Caitlyn Lux Twisted Fate, they will not be able to add much damage to you. So if you're shredding front line of the opponents, then your team can actually, you know, win front to backs like that. The problem is when there are melee carries in the game and Whippo is definitely a big threat for taking him down. But yeah. a lot of junglers, especially, um, you know, and bruisers in general, have been struggling after the nerfs to, or the changes Derek's. in stats to all of the um, bruiser items, where they removed a lot of the base health and, uh, you know, moved a lot of the stat value into damage. So it's either, you know, stuff like Black Cleaver or Death Dance if you're a little bit more ahead and looking for the carry potential. But look at this macro here um, with the bottom side push for Team Liquid. Uh, being able to at least push the wave while they're trying to hold off the siege from the Golden Guardians. Again, Golden Guardians don't want to risk too much before the next dragon. They get a huge value out of trying to set up first for, you know, this Mountain Soul, obviously. So they're just going to push on top side, clean this red quadrant of the jungle, and they have plenty of time to reset first and then go move in to get their deeper vision first. So let's take stock of where everything is with this upcoming fight here in about 90 seconds. We've got stopwatches for both Lost and Licorice on the side of the Golden Guardians. Quicksilver Sash for a Blaze Olive after completing that core of Everfrost, Fimble Winter, and Frozen Heart. Over on the other side, Bjergsen is full build Twisted Fate. Everfrost, Zonia's Rapid Fire Cannon. These are the three items that just make this champion so effective at what he does. You were talking about Whippo being a 
melee carry, he's got Sunderer, he's got Bork. If he gets on top of a valuable target, he does a ton of damage, but he is very vulnerable if he goes in at the wrong time. If he's focused down, that can spell a disaster. Looking at summoner spells, all the flashes are up for the Golden Guardians, everything except for the teleport of a Blaze Olive. Team Liquid has everything except Whippo's flash, but it should be ready to go in time for that fight. Yeah, and I like Bjergsen switching to the exhaust with the summoner spell book here for this fight can have a really big impact, um, especially for the Zin that we've been talking about, um, who is now building what I presume to be a Death Stance with that Warhammer that he's got in inventory. So definitely always very, very nice to have an extra exhaust to shut down some of those uh, melee threats and setting up. And we'll see, 30 seconds on this dragon. Bottom, okay. bottom side currently being pushed for Team Liquid, but Golden Guardians make a strong choice here in trying to push out mid control first before being able to get into the into the river is generally easier to play off of mid wave control to rotate for the dragon than it is bottom lane control and they actually hook in santorin but he holds on to his ultimate cooldown Very does not panic does cost him a significant chunk of life and there's no jungle camps for him to heal off though so that will be a bit painful and it looks like team liquid is in no position to try to challenge for this golden guardians will take an uncontested Mountain Soul just about 28 minutes into the game. Kobe, this is looking pretty solid. This has not been a bad mid game for the Golden Guardians. Certainly looks like they are marching towards an engage. Honestly, Golden Guardians here now can just uh, pull off their reset to get some more control wards. They just invested in you know the Dragon area. Uh, even even with the the meager <laughs> the meager coverage that they have, Team Liquid are already sweating. They go for the pick on a blaze though, and he oh flashes. he flashed away. Pop the QSS now too. Golden Guardians scramble to keep their mid laner alive, and he's got a little bit of extra shielding to do just that. Uh -oh. Jinx is ready to go to reset city, and it ain't looking pretty for Team Liquid. They are ripped in half and a quadra kill for loss. Oh, only one getting stolen by Licorice there. That is gonna be a Golden Guardians dub. Flowers, Mountain Soul on them already. They get the ace. They don't have to go for the engage because Team Liquid come for them. Woo, Golden Guardians starting out super weak with a banger upset. Golden Guardians have shown us time and time and time and time and time and time again how good their early game is, but they kept messing up the mid game. Not today, not against TL. Golden Guardians, get the win. And they are now on a two game win streak of us casting them. So hey. we, have, we have been yeah. witness to the Golden Guardians closing out games. Golden Guardians are doing it, man. This team has such a scary early game, and we're watching them get better and better at transitioning that into actual wins, making sure they're not giving away the games with those silly mistakes in the mid game. The outplay from a Blaze Olive in the damn 1v3. <laughs> this, when, when this dude goes backstage, he better they better ask him, what would you like to eat, sir? What would you like to drink, sir? Allow us to get you two of them. That saved the game. To me that made it so they were still in a good spot they were still able to keep going that was a hero move man a blaze olive a blaze olive a blaze olive say the name you're gonna hear more of it yeah oh my gosh that that feels so bad for for Bjergsen and Hansama too them both flashing away trying to get away from this rise and in the end the flux bouncing between them anyway you, you love to see it um, in solo queue games. It's always funny, you know, when like a, most often a Blitzcrank is charging you down, right? Yeah. Charging down multiple people, throws out the hook, and your friend in front of you flashes out of the way what? without saying anything, and you get grabbed. This is just that times two because it still bounces to you, and even though you flash, not only does your teammate die, but you still die as well. That was hilarious. Well done by a blaze, but all of the golden guardians here, definitely a well-deserved win. And this one was versus top rated team liquid, formerly number one in the LCS mm -hmm. now dropping down um, and FlyQuest take that honor. Uh, but such, such a meaningful win here to start off super week for this team. That is, cruising past 50% now, moving up the standings and trying to really leave that mark and head towards playoffs. And 
I, I just got to praise Ole one more time for that early play in the bottom lane as well that got lost ahead. Just awesome showing from the Golden Guardians all around. They defeat our LCS Titans. And to hear more about how they did it, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to Lost and LaTigris for our Verizon post-game interview. Thank you, Captain Flowers. An epic victory for Golden Guardians here today. And I think it's fair to say that multiple members popped off and performed their job during this. So I want to ask you about a couple specific scenarios. First of all, in that fight where unfortunately you died early, but Ablaze Olive was able to pick it up with a 1v3, what was the reaction from you and the team? Because that was such a pivotal moment in the mid game. Oh, it's kind of funny because I think after uh, we kind of messed up the fight, or in particular me, we're kind of like, dang, that kind of sucks. We're so far ahead. And we're just like chilling, and then Nyx just 1v3ing them. And as soon as he pulls it off, we just start screaming. So that was insane by Nick. Uh, yeah. I'm told to do this, so you keep talking. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. But yeah, I was really hype when he pulls it off, and, um, you know, he's insane for it. Yeah. Talking about the Ablaze Olive moment, if any of you didn't hear that there. And then speaking into later on in the game, because it did feel like from there, you all got your heads together. The mid game has been a bit difficult for GG in the past. So what was different right now when going against a team like Team Liquid that has such expert in that point in the game? Uh, the other weeks, we we're like almost losing games despite being 10K up. And uh, yeah, that was a big big thing for us this week in practice and i think we closed out our game def like a lot better than we did in our previous weeks uh this game so i'm really proud of us for that because uh you don't really want to see a team 10k up almost losing the game that's kind of sus yeah yeah definitely sus how are you feeling about your own level of play within these team fights because you as well had to have expert selection of the right targets being able to follow up on a lot of the setup that ole was doing well as well uh, i think for the most part my team fights this game were like they're all right I kind of messed up the bot fight despite being super far ahead, and then they kind of sent it into like a big choke, you know, below Baron. So I wouldn't say like I performed exceptionally in team fights, but good enough to win. You got the quadra though. Any yes, thoughts on yes, that Pam. one in particular? If I played better, I get a penta. Ah, uh, okay, all right, all right. So in general though, super weak. We heard Ablaze all of saying some of the featured content, how it's important to set the tone. You took down Team Liquid, which is a really tough start to this. So how is the team feeling going into the rest of the week with two more matches on the line? I think Team Liquid are a super, super strong team and they've soared. So an old, uh, an old coach of mine uh, felt really good to beat them. And I think we have momentum heading into the next two matches. Yeah, a lot of connections between multiple members. Gigi out here in the audience, ready to cheer you on. Last, thank you for stopping by for the interview and congratulations again to Gigi on the victory. Thank you. More to say on this game. Let's head on over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you so much, the Tigers. Definitely more to say as I think it's fair uh, to point out that none of us expected this result. Golden Guardians nope. over a Team Liquid squad that drops to five and two. And I only cite the Team Liquid record because of some conversations that have happened quite recently mm -hmm. about the expectations for Team Liquid over this split. Now, this started last week on the broadcast. I know it was followed up on the dive here, Mark, but 16 and two was the spring I split would like to clarify. <laughs> First, it was called out by Jack. Yep. I've heard, though, that you decided to jump down. on that train, I, double down on it. Toby and Isaiah were doubters, and mm -hmm. I defended Jet, and I took a bet on the dive that they go 16 2. But that was before Ayla came back in. Uh, so yeah. I'm weaseling okay. out. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm the weaseling. second best support I'm in the league weaseling. you're talking about right yeah, there. Yeah, well, my I made it with the best support in the league, in, all right? <laughs> I'm weaseling out of this bet. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Golden Guardians have put Jat and Mark in a precarious position. Let's talk sure. about how they got it done, Emily. Yeah, so uh, I do want to talk about this <laughs> draft, actually, uh, because I did really like TL's draft and what it does. I, I think Whippo is actually an excellent Diego player, if anyone watched him in the jungle uh, last year. Um, but if you are smashing these two comps against each other in 5v5 fights mid to late, I think that Golden Guardians is a lot easier to execute, especially with, like, we've talked about Jinx in a lot of these fights and despite her lack of range, she can just completely take over a game. Yeah, something that they just have to be aware of going up against Team Liquid's comp is the fact that there's just a lot of CC lockdown. If you get hit by a gold card, with especially with mm -hmm. like RFC gets finished up, then it's into Lux Q, uh, into Trap. Like you just you you get 
killed pretty quickly, right? So, like, in terms of ease of execution, if Team Liquid's on position first of an objective, like, they should be able to take it cleanly. The problem that they ran into, though, was Ole. Ole oh. smurfed the lane phase to not only force out a lot of flashes and summoners, they traded kills back and forth. And the important thing about this was that it made that TS, or excuse me, Team Liquid did not have the early game they wanted. Golden Guardians was stacking objectives, so that, to Raz's point, you know, it wasn't that Team Liquid was forcing any to face check them. And then you also, like Emily was saying, have a better 5v5 team comp, and you kind of got through the roughest part of the game. And just off the back of Ole's playmaking, he was such a massive bridge for mm -hmm. the side of, of Golden Guardians. And when we talk about, like, what Caitlyn Lux do, again, I want to revisit, like, you want to shove that in, get turret, and rotate. And TL were not able to do that, despite plays like this, where they were actually winning out in team fights. I really loved how uh, Bjergsen joined up for this play, and I thought he individually with the team had a really good game. Yeah, and I mean, this play definitely saved Team Liquid because having two mm -hmm. volatile lanes really helpful for Twisted Fate. You can look towards uh, bot lane, ideally, but then after the uh, the first blood helps, the first fight that ended up happening does help Hansam a little bit more, but then the second death into losing the full cannon minion mm -hmm. wave, and then now Jinx mm -hmm. has two kills up on you, you have to shut down bot lane out and say, okay, maybe we actually look either to recover bot lane or go top. They went top, made the game a little easier for Team Liquid, uh, but the game it, it was still difficult. Now, Mark, you already uh, called out how important a factor uh, Ole was in the victory here for Golden Guardians, but there was some uh, some heroics required by another <laughs> member, let's say, at the very least here in a Blaze Olive, who picks up player of the game on his rise. Yeah, this triple kill that he got in this team fight was absolutely critical for how bad it started. You know, Raz was talking about how Team Liquid started to make plays of their own, they were executing their comp, and this started uh, pretty well for them with a long flank TP from Bjergsen coming in, and this is where the Full tank rise into almost entirely physical damage from Team Liquid's composition is able to punish them. The fact that TF is the only magic damage and he wasn't particularly ahead in the game meant that after all these cooldowns are blown, he can kind of go hero mode. And the coolest thing, as we're uh, flying some tweets from Olive and others, like, again, he studied under Bjergsen. As Raz mentioned, like, he wanted to learn yeah. from Bjergsen. So to have this moment against him in this game and have Golden Guardians pull out the victory, that, like, the it's, such a, it's so great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unlucky. What a great, and the student becomes the master moment though, right? Uh, <laughs> getting to face up against, uh, yeah, one of your former mentors and be able to take him down in an LCS stage game. Yeah, in his rookie uh, year, couldn't get to go up against the Bjergsen because he was coaching. Right. Finally gets the opportunity yeah. now. Right as I'm stepping on the LCS yeah. stage, you, you bench yourself. <laughs> You're running away from me. <laughs> scared Bjergsen into retirement. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to do it again. You saw the face of the LCS future on the bench behind him and Bjergsen <laughs> ran away. Yeah. All right, but so Lost, Lost saw that, uh, that a Blaze picked up three, decided, hey, I'll do you one better, and picks up four here at the end of the game. Should have been five. <laughs> Should have been five. <laughs> Should have been five. Flickerish. Crazy. You think because I mean, you got long, luscious locks, you can get away with anything? I will say this is what I was talking about when you smash these two teams together in in mid to late, and it doesn't matter because you can't set up those picks and spread out this team. This team just absolutely runs over you with the, the rise and the jinx. Um, I also want to point out uh, Golden Guardians. Like we've talked about how good their early game is, and then where they would falter is mid to late. Um, not only do we stop the Caitlyn Lux lane early and Golden Guardians did end up having a, a good early game, but their actual like cross mapping was really smart. Like they, it's stuff that we've kind of seen inklings of in their previous games, but in this game, like every time TL made a play, they actually were able to get a positive play somewhere else on the map. So I wanted to shout that out to them as well. I, and it's good that we do, right? Uh, I, I think for so many too, when you look at the uh, kind of the matchup of these two squads, well, first of all, yeah, I was about to was the ball. Yeah. What? Yep. That's fantastic. Cam loss breakdance? I'm not. That's what you gotta wonder when you see a still photo, right? Is is it lying to me, right? Or, is this like he did he flail stand. up into the air and our photographers caught the right moment, or, or is he actually? That's I don't what, know. He looks I, like he's got form. I think it's actually the most graceful face plant you've ever yeah. seen. That's it's just it's, like they he slipped. In it's that a very moment. fast shutter speed, <laughs> so there's no motion blur. You know, it's just a very great right. picture. All right, Mark. I say you get out in front. The photographer's here, so let's see if we can get you in the oh, same no, exact no. position. On the other side, both the S700. Use fight to regain their footing in spring as they face off in game three right after this. What about you, Rez? You gonna go for it? No, I'm not. <laughs> ah, come oh. on. Well done, though. Good read. Yeah, good read. <laughs>
What's going on? Jake from State Farm. The perp just confessed. I think. I don't know. Uh, what? Oh, can't afford streaming anymore, so here we are. Oh, don't give up what you love. State Farm has options to personalize your policy so you get a rate that fits your budget. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. The subtitles would be nice. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today.